chapter, we're going to be talking about light pollution and the different forms of light pollution, and I'll be giving many specific examples. So light pollution refers to the excessive brightening of the night sky by artificial light, street luminaires, which we know as street lights, billboards, shop windows, and similar lighting installations that are switched on overnight produce light that reaches the atmosphere directly or indirectly through surface reflections. And the International Dark Sky Association is an organization that is based in Tucson, Arizona, and they have an official definition of what light pollution is, which I'm going to use for this course. So the International Dark Sky Association defines light pollution as the inappropriate or excessive use of artificial light that can have serious environmental consequences for humans, wildlife, and our climate. So who were the first people that noticed that light pollution was an issue and that these excess lighting of our streets and in our homes are really be creating an emerging problem? So astronomers were actually the first people to notice that artificial lighting concealed celestial objects. So light pollution actually isn't just an overall blanket term. There's actually different forms of light pollution, which we're going to discuss. So light pollution is categorized into different forms, which include sky glow, glare, light trespass, also known as light intrusion, light clutter, and over-illumination. So the next few minutes, I'll be discussing the specific types, how they're defined, and be giving examples, including pictures, of the different forms of light pollution. So the first form of light pollution is sky glow. Sky glow can be seen nightly over any city. It is the pink-orange glow that enrobes an entire city or town, and it can be defined as light that has been carelessly or sometimes deliberately projected from the ground or a structure. Sky glow colors the night sky and reduces the visibility of astronomical objects. Sky glow can also be seen from space with satellite images showing a brightly lit Earth. So an example of sky glow here in this photo, a friend of mine who's a professional photographer, we went to a rural area and we were at a beach that was very dark. This beach is on Vancouver Island and you can see in the distance that the lights that are producing sky glow are actually coming from the major city of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. So already you can see that Vancouver is highly illuminated with sky glow. It, it would be very difficult to see stars from the urban center of Vancouver. And the sky glow is even coming towards Vancouver Island and making it difficult to see the night sky from our particular location. The next form of light pollution is light clutter. Light clutter is lights that shine in multiple directions. There's no clear lighting direction of the lights and light clutter can really be found in any modern city. You can see here in this photo that you can see all the light coming out of the top of the luminaire, the street light in this picture. So the light is actually meant to go on the ground. Lighting should actually light what it's actually intended to lit and it should be pointing downwards. The light here in this photo is actually going up into the night sky and it's not really doing anyone much help because it's not lighting what it's intended to. So light clutter is also the expression for groups of street lights which are positioned too close together and that they, all these streetlights also emit an unnecessarily excessive amount of light as an overall consequence. The next form of light pollution is glare. So glare can be classified as the bright light that shines in your eyes that you raise your hand to block. I'm sure many of you have been walking before and any kind of light, it's just too much, it's too intense, and you just want to put up your hand to block it. So what is the cause of glare? Glare is defined that when light shines out in any direction from streetlights, it can cause any sense of distraction, Glare causes discomfort, and glare can cause a lack of ability to see what the light is actually meant to illuminate. There are also different types of glare, so there's brightness glare, discomfort glare, and disability glare. And glare from unshielded lighting is actually a public health hazard because light scatters into your eye, and this can cause a loss of contrast, which can also temporarily cause blindness. So glare can actually lead to unsafe driving conditions. Perhaps you've been driving and you've noticed that a lot of the modern cars have these white blue lights that are coming from people's headlights of their car. And I don't know if you've ever been driving, but I know I have. And as these bright lights come towards me, I instantly can't see and I want to put my hand up to block it. So glare can actually be quite dangerous and it is something that we need to manage. Another form of light pollution is light trespass. So light trespass is light that spills onto an adjacent property. Light trespass refers to incorrectly controlled or incorrectly directed light. So an example of light trespass is if you were sleeping and your neighbor's light came into your bedroom window. You were trying to sleep, but you were unable to. This light was just too bright. It was bothering you, but there was nothing you could do about it. Either the light came from the neighbor's property or came from a nearby street light. So light trespass is quite an annoyance for people who when they try and sleep at night and, and in the neighborhood, it's just too bright. 
So perhaps some of you have experienced this yourself. The last form of light pollution I will discuss is overillumination. Overillumination is defined as the excessive use of light where lighting intensity is higher than what is required for a specific activity. So you can see the example of this photo with overillumination. Perhaps to play sports at a brightly lit field in that evening, it was not required to have that many street lights. So essentially, many tasks that we do, we have too much lighting to do them. We don't always need so much light. It's not about not having light, it's just about not having so much. And we can easily perform the tasks that we need with less lighting. So I'm going to talk about a really interesting story. So in 1994, there was a big earthquake in Los Angeles. Perhaps some of you remember it. Because of this earthquake, there was a major power outage in the city of LA and the lights were turned off. People began freaking out, calling 911 and other emergency centers saying there's something going on in the night sky, there's something happening in the night sky, what is this, what's happening, what's so strange? But what was actually happening was that the people in Los Angeles were actually seeing the Milky Way for the first time. So this proves that in 1994 there was already some really big emerging issues with light pollution and the Milky Way was already lost as well as many constellations I'm sure. So it's really important then to know we've probably lost even more of the night sky and access to other night skies in other cities since 1994. So you're probably wondering, where is the brightest spot on Earth? Well, there's no brighter spot in the world than the Las Vegas Strip. So since the 1940s, back then, Las Vegas was actually quite dark because it's based in the desert. There was no street lighting, of course. So Las Vegas was once a completely dark place, and since then, it has become the brightest place in the world. And the actual brightest beam of light on Earth is from the apex of the Luxor Hotel. Perhaps you've been to Las Vegas, walk the Strip, and you've come across the Luxor. You can see this beam miles away. And the light beam is comprised of 30 non-xenon lamps that are 6 feet tall and 3 feet wide, and they reflect off a mirror. So that's what makes the beam shoot up into the night sky. If you had the right exposure and the right time lapse on your camera, and you took a picture of the Luxor beam, you would see that moths, birds, and bats actually get caught in the beam of the light of the Luxor. And the Luxor Hotel light beam has been on since 1993. So you can imagine the amount of energy consumption, how much light's been into the night sky, and some of the environmental damages that it's actually caused. This has been on for a very long time. So over 100 years ago, you could go outside at night in a city and you could see the Milky Way. But now with more than half of the world's population living in cities, three out of every four people in cities have never experienced pristinely dark skies. So light pollution is not considered by some to actually be pollution because it's not considered permanent pollution. The great thing about light pollution is it can actually easily be reversed, so it's more of an issue about knowing how to manage lights and using proper education to combat this issue. So it's not just about turning off lights and making lighting disappear because of course we need lights to function in society and do the activities that we love to do at night. It's just a matter of mindfulness. So most light pollution is actually found in urban settings where artificial light sources are numerous. And I'll discuss now that some of the most light polluted countries in the world are Singapore, Qatar, and Kuwait. In Singapore, for example, the entire population lives under an intense level of artificial nighttime brightness. And an example of a Canadian city that in large Canadian cities, more than 95% of the stars that can normally be seen with the naked eye are no longer visible. So in Toronto, Canada, Canada's largest observatory was actually in Toronto, but unfortunately the observatory closed in 2008 because astronomers could no longer see a dark starry sky. Light pollution is not just in North America, it's actually a global issue and it's impacting everybody. About 14% of the world's population does not use their nighttime vision anymore, because the night is so bright that people use their color daytime vision to look up at the sky instead. Light pollution, as I mentioned, is very solvable. It's just a matter of putting on lights responsibly. Now that we have covered the different types of light pollution, let's move on to the implications of light pollution and how it impacts human health, wildlife, ecosystems, the environment, and the night sky.